I'm truly thankful for my private clients and their investment in me and the opportunity to serve them because it's made possible all that I do. I want to share with you today a very important Thanksgiving update or Thanksgiving exercise that you can do with your contacts in order to cultivate a better business relationship and also get that opportunity to serve and to create results that is very rewarding, uh, both financially and individually. I'm Justin Hitt from Inside Strategic Relations. This simple concept is to express gratitude to your list segments while getting a recommendation from the list or giving a gift to the list or getting a recommitment from that list. Now, what am I talking about here? You've, everybody's got contacts. You've got LinkedIn and you've got all these friends on LinkedIn. You've got social media and all these friends there. And you've got mailing lists of past customers. You've got prospects in the marketplace. These are all list segments. Your LinkedIn people are a certain type of people that maybe you've made business connections with. Your Facebook people are people who have been friends or have made requests over the years, maybe high school grad, you know, your high school class or your college class. Ultimately, each of these segments have different needs and you want different things from those folks. So your high school people, you want the gratification of them recognizing how much better off you've done than they have done in their lives. I don't, I don't know what it is for you. I, that's not what it is for me, but maybe you want to kindle old connections. Maybe you want to make sure uh, you, have, you create recreational opportunities with these folks. Your uh, LinkedIn page, sometimes you might be looking for a new opportunity. And so you want to connect with those folks in case an opportunity comes up that's in your area and ultimately stay in touch for that reason. Now, by the way, if you don't have a reason for each of these lists, if you don't have a reason to go on Facebook or you don't have a reason for uh, LinkedIn or these other platforms, don't don't mess with them. I, I, I warn you right now, social media is designed in such a way to become addictive. It's designed for you to connect with and stay connected with because they're monetizing your attention. Now, in the other way, if you are using social media to research individuals, to set up sales opportunities, to stay connected with family members, and, and that's their preferred method, then you got to use it for what works for you. That's the kind of the whole theme of strategic relations, uh, leverage mutually beneficial relationships for the things that you want while helping other people get what they want. So here, here's what we've got. We've got Thanksgiving coming up. Today is uh, November 24th. And what if there was a way that you could reach out to each of these segments in a meaningful way that, again, helps you reestablish that connection So for example, I've got old mailing lists that are in my contact management system, but I've changed over to another list management system and these people are not on the new list. What could I do to get them to raise their hand and get on the new list so that I have permission to contact them in the future? Uh, What about friends that you haven't talked to with, talked with it in a while? There are some folks that around the holidays I think about and I like to reach out to them in a meaningful way. Just to let them know, hey, I'm thinking about you. Maybe they're having a rough time. You know, with COVID, a lot of folks are locked in. A lot of folks haven't been out. Uh, Are you sending notes to those people and saying, hey, I'm thinking about you. Hope everything's okay. Uh, You know, here's some updates. I'm going to give you a formula here in a minute. But the key is, is are you making the effort for connection? Okay, nobody's going to reach out to you. If they do, it's going to be superficial. But if you want results from other people, you've got to establish strong relationships. And so I got this idea from a friend of mine who calls me periodically and he's just, hey, how you doing? Here's what I've been doing. What have you been up to? You know, what are you looking for? What are, the, what are you looking to do in the future? And it goes like this. So I create a letter for my newsletter folks or my my contact management list and I find a segment and I say, look, I'm thankful to help you. I'm thankful to help high income professionals and entrepreneurs create stronger and more powerful business relationships. And and then I tell the truth over the years, many of my clients have thanked me for being able to deliver these results for them, but I'm ultimately thankful for the opportunity to serve them. That's her first paragraph. You're expressing your gratitude to the other person. Hey, I'm thankful for you thinking of me over the year. And I'd like to to just let you know that I'm thinking about you and I'm wishing you the very best. Something sincere, something open. Next, you're going to open up 
specifically, number two is, is what are you thankful about them? Hey, I'm thankful that you touch base with me every so often because I'm not always keeping up with the people I know. And it's really meaningful to me that you take the time to do that. There you go. See, I've shared something important, something valuable for a client. Hey, uh, you specifically have got involved with our accounting services. Imagine this. Imagine what how you would feel if your CPA sent you a note around Thanksgiving that said, I'm very thankful for the opportunity to do accounting work and complex bookkeeping for my clients. I'm specifically thankful for you as a client who regularly does their taxes with us. And we, we, and it was great to talk with you last week or last month about your tax planning situation. Okay. And then number three is you tell them where they can get more information. If you'd like to get some resources to help us plan for next year's taxes, I put together this free report on my website. Click here. Okay, so you have a sincere message. How would you feel if your CPA contacted you and said, look, man, thanks for doing business with us for over the years. And I know the tax code is is complex and difficult, but I'm glad together we've been able to solve the challenges you have around paying lower taxes legally. You'd be like, oh, my gosh, uh, thanks for thinking. of it. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Thanks for thinking. And if he said, oh, by the way. Uh, we have this new gift. And if you're interested in this gift, I'd like to send it to you. You know, the gift could be an actual gift. It could be a, a flower basket. I did this one time with clients and we had made arrangements with a local restaurant. Now, a little difficult during COVID, but I was friends with the owner of the restaurant and I bought meal vouchers. So I bought a coupon, a gift certificate. And I wrote my clients and I said, look, I'm very thankful for you investing. Uh, I, uh, I've been, my um, my brain gets little farts every so often. I guess that's having a stroke at 22 is going to do to you. Anyway, I wrote to them using the same formula. Hey, I'm thankful to help many fleet owners with their fueling needs. I responded, I'm also thankful for you being a long-term customer. And I actually mail merged when they started being a customer. Uh, I've worked with a local restaurant to get 15 mail, meal vouchers for my clients. If you're interested, let me know. Raise your hand. Let me know. Okay. I ended up giving out all 15 meal vouchers and they all enjoyed the restaurant, which my, was my friend's restaurant. And that was Goodwill. And it cost me, I think is $10 a plate. The regular meals were like 25 bucks. It was a decent restaurant, it's kind of a family style, but decent restaurant. I got the tickets for $10 a plate because I bought a whole bunch of them at one time. And ultimately I offered them as a gift to say, thank you. Thank you for being a customer. Now, as a salesperson, what did this mean to me? Well, it cost me about a dollar to two dollars per letter that went out, and then of course I paid ten dollars per voucher, and so probably another dollar for the response uh, for the folks. I sent the letter out to maybe a hundred people, and I, I had people actually had to call in to get the voucher, or they had to to fax something in to get the voucher. Uh, so I didn't. I ended up giving away all the vouchers, and I think I bought a couple extra because there are a few extra people that asked. But that turned into six thousand dollars in new business in the next ninety days. So I spent a hundred dollars on the letters, uh, probably one hundred fifty, two hundred dollars on the vouchers, and altogether I'm in maybe four hundred dollars. I get six thousand dollars in commissions. Now, what did the people get when they got the letter? Well, they got the same feeling you may get if your CPA or account or accountant or lawyer wrote you a letter and said, hey, thanks. You know, I've been fortunate to help people with their divorces and I've been able to help people with their legal challenges. And I, I was, you know, it's an unfortunate situation, but I'm happy I was able to be of service to you during your divorce. And by the way, here's a, a, a guide from a counselor that I work with that has the five mental state issues you need to be aware of after a divorce. That might be useful to you if you're part of their divorce segment, if you're part of their segment, because it could be anything, could be any topic. The key here is, is again, you're expressing your gratefulness and your, your thankfulness by the segment, reinforcing the value you created in that segment, specifically addressing that individual. Now, you could actually write to each individual, which I've done in the past and it works out well. Uh, it's it's definitely worth the time. But you can also just talk through the whole segment. Hey, I'm thankful that in the last 12 months, I've been able to help you find the home of your dreams. So you're a real estate agent. In the last 12 months, I've been able to help you find the, the, the home of your dreams. And uh, everything went smooth and, and blah, blah, blah. You're, you're just talking about the common experience. 
you literally send that to a list of everybody who's bought from you in the last 12 months. And then after that, you can have a referral. You know, many of my best clients look just like the clients I have. And so that's why your referrals are so important. And that's why I'm offering um, just for asking about how you might be able to refer this free gift. You're not asking them to refer. You're saying that if you wanted to refer, I'd be happy to share more information about how you can refer. And for doing so, I'd like to send you a holiday gift. See, a lot of folks would understand that you might send a letter out because there's a limited number of gifts and gifts are so expensive. And if they really want the gift, they can certainly acknowledge that they're interested and you'll be happy to send them that gift. And if that gift forwards or facilitates their goals and objectives, then it's just goodwill. It's that warm, glowing feeling that they'll have when they think about you. If someone else says, you know, who's a real estate agent that you trust? Well, look, this this real estate agent said, thank you. I've worked with a lot of real estate agents and very few of them ever say thank you. They'll run off with $15,000 commissions, $6,000, $7,000 commissions, and they will not send me a thank you note except for once. I had one that sent it. So what's your takeaway? Again, it's formulaic. You can do it event-based with Thanksgiving, for example, it's narrow scoped to your list segments. So the folks on Facebook will get a different message than the folks on LinkedIn. Now you might be saying, well, Justin, uh, you know, I can just do direct messages, right? I can just send them an email. Uh, no, no. To really make this work, I want you to go and go to the dollar store or go someplace and get a stack of cards. I have a drawer here full of thank you notes that yeah, I basically just buy them. They're like compulsive. I buy them, I buy them, I buy them. And then I will handwrite a little note and I'll put a stamp on it and I'll write their address on it and I'll put it in the mail. See, people are getting so little mail that when they get something special in the mail, they're stoked about it. Um, you also want to make sure that when you give them the option to opt in that you're getting permissions. So you may want to send them to a website with a coded link so you can track that. And then ultimately... Um, the offer does need to be useful. It can't be a real pitch. You can't say, hey, thanks for, you know, I'm very thankful that I was able to help a number of men with their divorces because we specialize in men's divorces and we're happy we're able to help you this year. And by the way, if you're going to do a second divorce, we'd like to give you 50% off. It's not like that. It is very soft offer. Now the soft offer again gets permission to follow up and you could put a hard offer in the follow up but it, but it's really about showing your gratitude. You're going to spend a dollar to show your gratitude to a customer who's likely spend a multitude of that and you're going to do it in such a way that connects with that individual by focusing on segments and then ultimately from being thankful to showing gratitude, you're going to deliver a gift. And that gift could literally be a gift. I've given away fruit baskets. I've given away uh, theater tickets or racetrack tickets, uh, depending on your customer. Some want the theater. Some want the the racetrack. And I segmented the list by uh, folks that are interested in supporting the arts and folks that are interested in racing and sports. And then I sent the racing and sports people literally the same formula. But at the end, I said, oh, by the way, I've got 12 race tickets to Richmond. And if you're interested, I'd like to give you a copy. I like to give you a, a ticket to race tickets. How many would you like? And uh, uh, the other side, I had uh, tickets to a uh, local theater. So you can contact your local arts council and you can say, hey, look, what plays are coming up? Can I buy bulk tickets? You can usually buy the tickets at half of their list price for like a community play. And then again, uh, you can go and offer them out. Now for nonprofits, one of the things that I would do, and I talk about this in my uh promotion through, through nonprofits is I actually buy like a whole book of steak dinner tickets. I write off the steak dinner tickets because it's a charitable contribution for me because I bought the whole book, but I'm not going to eat the steaks. I then offer to give those steak dinner tickets away, which promotes the event. I say, Oh, by the way, the local boy scout troops doing a steak dinner. And if you're interested, now I didn't do this for my local boy scout troop here. I've done it for for other organizations, but I'm using Boy Scouts as an example. The local scout troop is doing a steak dinner on such and such a date, and I just happen to have 10 tickets. How many would you like? I'm giving them to you for free for being a loyal customer. And it doesn't matter if you give all 10 tickets to somebody or you give two tickets to them. As long as they're really going to use them, you've already got the tax deduction for for the 
uh, contribution. You've gotten the goodwill by letting people know you support the local community, and then you've ultimately gained a gift by the individual who raised their hand and took action. And and the last to take away is you can literally do this and give away $100 bills, and you'll be surprised how few people raise their hand. But ultimately, by showing sincere gratitude specific to a list segment and then offering something of value to that list that is non Monetary. You're not asking them to buy more. You're you're rewarding them for their previous behavior. You'll actually reinforce the desired behavior of doing business with you in the future. It's a powerful technique. And it is a technique that feels good for you as well because you'll discover that that message meant a lot to the other person and you didn't even realize it. You're simply thinking you're going to grow your business by being a little more personable, but ultimately the other person starts referring or they, they reactivate or they ultimately uh, are still there in the future. And that's probably the last point. I have a list of recruiters, 25 recruiters that I try to maintain relationships with and they bring me deals all the time, opportunities that are great and wonderful, but I don't need it. I already got an opportunity. I actually then take those resp- those opportunities and refer them out to my friends. And so now I'm, I'm staying in touch with the recruiters in case I do need an opportunity. And I'm staying in touch with my friends, offering them an opportunity. And all I had to do is write a simple letter every so often just to let these people know I care. And I do sincerely care about their, their success. I compare, care about their well-being, and I ultimately uh, want that relationship to grow in a profitable way. I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations, and this has been about uh, seemingly simple, but it does require a little bit of effort, but a method that you can use to grow relationships, create value in a marketplace, and move forward the mutual goals and objectives that those around you have. If you have any questions about what I've covered today, you can reach me at www.insidestrategicrelations.com. And again, I am sincerely thankful that you took the time to listen to this podcast. I, I would love to hear about, and it really warms my heart to hear about your success stories of what you've done with this podcast. If you like specific templates, uh, when you visit the website, ask about the templates. I did write a program called Instant Thank You Notes for Salespeople that we can pull from as well. But the formula I shared here, listen to this again, but the formula I shared here works extremely well and it's something I will be doing here shortly. So you might even see it. I think the last warning I had noted down here is that you don't want to send the same person multiple copies of this, by the way. So that's why we do it physical. We send physical letters. Um, you can send it on email, but uh, you know, I, I think physical letters are more powerful. Stratify your list so you can do that, at least for some of the folks on your list. Boy, I could go on for hours on this topic. If you've like a webinar where we deep dive into these thank you note strategies, um, you would be shocked how powerful it can be just to send a little note. And I've got stories to share with you. I've got practical implementation. So again, if you visit www.insidestrategicrelations.com and ask your questions about this topic, I'd be more than happy to answer and help you move forward with these concepts. I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations, here to help you transform business relationships into profits guaranteed.